Good afternoon, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it's one that I did promise you a couple of weeks ago. So if you're new here, hello, but if you are returning, then this is the one we talked about where I'm gonna show you through my entire indoor plant collection. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a little while, but I do just have one more plant I wanna to add to the collection. So we're gonna head down to the local nursery and pick that up today. And then I'm gonna figure out where I will put it while I also show you through all of the existing plants that I have in my space so if you don't know I'm an architect and an interior designer so for me having beautiful plants in my indoor area is really really important and it's something that I really value because not only do they kind of bring the outdoors in but they also just give you something to look after and kind of bring that natural element that can really enhance the indoor air quality in your space but I just find that plants also just make me really happy to look at and I didn't find that I was getting that from some of the fake plants that I used to have. So I did replace literally all of them with real plants and I'm also going to show you how I propagate some of them as well and how I've repotted some of the cuttings and kind of just gotten a bunch of plants for free really from my existing plants that I have here. So that's what we're going to do today and I hope you guys really enjoy this. So let's get ready to head off to the nursery and I can go and source a couple more plants before we complete the collection. So this has been my situation for the drive home. I've got the big, big plant in the back and I've got my little baby on the side seat here. So it's been a little bit cramped, but thankfully the nursery is not too far from home. So now we can go upstairs and I'm gonna find a home for this one. I didn't end up getting a pot because it was a little bit, they were really expensive. They were probably about $250. So I'm gonna think about that and I'll probably just go to Bunnings or somewhere where they're a little bit more affordable and find something really nice and lightweight. Now that we're back, I just wanted to pop in here really quickly and say a thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Magic Mind. This is the Magic Mind little drink that I have been having every morning and I got a little box full. So I've been trying them out as a little bit of a replacement to coffee. So I do blend a little bit of coffee into my smoothies instead of kind of going down the street and getting my daily coffee at the moment. And this is a really beautiful thing that can complement that. So you just shake it and drink it and they are little green things so I thought that would be fun to include in this video since we're talking about all of the beautiful greenery in my home and they have a ton of natural ingredients so it's got matcha for giving you energy there's adaptogens for helping you to relax nootropics which keep you focused and honey which of course makes all of us really happy so I've been loving taking this I think it is a great alternative as it's lighter on caffeine and it's also a really great way to ensure you're keeping on top of all your tasks and being really productive so I would kind of look at this as being a little natural energy drink and like I said it's just something that is super easy super small and really great to incorporate into your daily routine if you're someone who feels a little bit overwhelmed and you just kind of want to get rid of that brain fog and get on with your daily tasks so I'm gonna take mine now and then I will show you the tour around my home cheers if you guys do want to try this out for yourself, they have been kind enough to give me a discount code, which is Emma20, and I'll leave all the details to Magic Mind down in the description box below. So this is my beautiful new friend. She is large and in charge, this one. I was a little bit scared that it might be too big for the apartment, but I do kind of plan to move, not just yet, but probably within the next six months, I am going to move into a two bedroom place because I'm kind of outgrowing this at the moment. So I think this will be fine and she's got a little bit of room until she hits the ceiling. So hopefully it'll be all right. But I have always wanted one of these giant bird of paradise. So I'm really excited to have this. And this is my other little one. I've just popped her down on the shelf here. So I have a little clay kit and I'm thinking that I might end up making a pot for this one instead. So let's go and place them somewhere around the house and then I can get on with the tour. I'll start my way at the entry and we can work our way through the apartment but 
Basically, this little one is a devil's ivy, or some people call it a pothos. And this one was actually a cutting from my main one in my kitchen. So I'm really impressed with how well it's grown. I basically just propagated it in water for a little bit and then I repotted the stem. So that's why it's kind of got this little chopstick in it. I did have ambitions to have it grow straight, but something that is really great about these is they will pretty much just track wherever they want to go. But you could also get little clips and put them up on the wall so that's something that I might consider with this one just to get it going in a different direction now that it's getting a little bit longer but it was a little bit more aggregated on the original one so there are some little leaves that show through like this but most of these ones are pretty plain looking now this special little spotted leaf one is called a begonia maculata and this is the one that I just picked up at the nursery so it's still in its kind of potting shed pot but I think that, like I said, I've got a clay kit, so I might try and do a little DIY where I make a pot for this one. And I just absolutely love this. I think the spotted leaves are just beautiful and they have this really rich burgundy kind of shade on the underside. So I'm really excited to have this as part of my collection. I've been eyeing these off for a little while and I just thought it was the perfect addition to this shelf that I've kind of styled up in my other DIY. And they are an indoor plant species. Just something to note with these is you obviously don't want to overwater them, but we are coming into summer. So in winter, I sort of break down my watering schedule to every two weeks, but in summer, I water my plants every single week. And obviously the amount varies depending on the size of the plants. Up here, I have some more of my cuttings and you can see they are pretty happy because a lot of them are sprouting new leaves and this one has a little leaf baby unfurling at the moment. So these are very, very happy. And I guess you would call this aqua profonda because I've got them sitting in this beautiful kind of urn. But if I pull them out and show you, basically they have all grown an entire root system on the bottom, which is how I repot and plant them because they are just literally sitting in there in water and then they start to grow their roots and then you have a beautiful healthy plant so i've got three separate cuttings all clustered in there and these ones are just about ready to get planted so i usually just trim off the excess from the bottom and then i pop them in a pot of my choice or i could pop them up and give them away to some friends because i do have a couple of people who are always asking about these and it just grows like crazy so if you are someone who's a real beginner in at-home plants, I would definitely recommend getting some Devil's Ivy. You can get it at Bunnings or just at your local nursery and it's really, really affordable and very easy to take care of. The next one is the new hero of my entire apartment and it is the Giant Bird of Paradise or the Streslechia Nicolai. And this one is something I have really wanted for a very long time. So I'm yet to find a pot for it, but I will definitely just get something white with a little bit of drainage to just keep it in its best health. But this is just an absolute hero piece for this apartment. And like I said, it is very tall. The ceiling is just up there. So these definitely are very large plants that you can have either indoors or outdoors. And I just think the leaves are incredibly beautiful. It has a full jungle kind of vibe. And as you guys know, my house is a sort of little bit of a Moroccan vibe going on. And these plants just really reminiscent of the gorgeous botanical gardens over there. So absolutely in love with this one. And I just think it brings real drama and scale to this otherwise plain portion of my apartment. A quick tip about these plants as well. This one has had some leaf oil freshly applied to give it that beautiful shine. So that is something that you can do if you're wondering why your plants look a little bit dull and not as luscious as other people's. If the leaves get splits in them like this, it's totally not a problem. It happens. They sometimes split on their own as they're growing or they just split in the breeze. So that is completely fine. And something else to note is under the leaves, sometimes they can get these little aphidy kind of bugs. So usually every six months, I will just apply a bit of an insecticide to them to make sure that it's going to be in its best health and not have any problems. 
Over here on my bar cart in the corner is my aggregated pothos. So as you can see, the aggregated bit just means like kind of like variations of, right? So on the leaves of this one, it has some yellow coloring kind of poking through. There are some really, really beautiful ones you can get that are sort of more whites and yellows and light greens and things as well. So would love to eventually add that to my collection, but Yet again, this one was probably $10 when I initially got it at Bunnings and it has quadrupled in size. So I've just kind of wrapped it all around those bottles and things there. And I just thought that was a really pretty addition to kind of green up this corner. The next plant I've got is this little Swiss cheese. And this one is one of my absolute new favorites. This will grow in a similar fashion to the Devil's Ivy. So that's why I wasn't too bothered about buying a really small plant stock of it because they grow very quickly and very easily. It's actually already had a couple of new leaves sprouting out from underneath it, which is very promising. And all they need is a really well lit space. And my apartment gets a lot of beautiful natural lighting anyway. So this one has been very happy. I did accidentally singe one of his leaves by leaving him too close to the kettle the other day, which is a bit unfortunate. So I do need to trim that, but I think this is another really beautiful and very unique variety if you're looking for a cool plant that you could kind of pop onto your desk or just watch it grow and i think it's so fascinating how some plants in nature have these kind of really unique patterns so yet again this is one of my really favorite ones and extremely inexpensive i think it was again around probably ten dollars this one is probably one of the healthiest plants that i own it's just gone absolutely berserk so this is called the Monsteria Boom. And if you met my little kitty, Milky, that I was fostering, he definitely got in this and stepped on it a bit. So some of them have gone a little bit sideways and a little bit damaged, which is quite annoying because it was really, really healthy, but I'm sure it will recover and be okay. Basically what this is, is a philodendron hope. And I ended up getting this in four little tube stock plants from Bunnings. And I combined them and put them all into this standing pot. And it has just absolutely flourished in this apartment. And I kind of like that it really gets long and droopy over the pot and is really, really dramatic. So love this one. Love watching the new leaves unfurl. You can see this fresh green one is a recent new leaf. And down here, there are a couple of baby ones just poking out, getting ready to grow. So this one I've also found is very easy. It definitely likes a little bit more water than some of the other plants because it is so luscious, but I just think it is incredibly beautiful and a really great way to add some volume to a space using a simple plant. This one is another off cut and it has just grown and grown and grown. So this one just loves to trail around here and keep growing. And like I said, it was literally just one of those ones that I'd had growing in water and then placed it in a small little pot from Kmart. And it just makes a really beautiful little bedside accessory. If you watched my most recent bedroom refresh video, you would be familiar with this beautiful vintage mirror that I picked up, but you would have also seen me feature this plant. So this one is a Zanzibar gem and they're sometimes referred to as a ZZ plant because of the kind of Z little formation of the leaves. And as you can see down in the bottom here, it does get a little bit of dead foliage and things. So you just kind of pick those out over time. But this more solid green looking one is an older leaf. And then you can see these lighter green ones are the new growth. So these plants are basically said to be unkillable. And it is definitely true because having this over here on this shelf, I did forget to water it for a little bit and it was completely fine. In fact, it really flourished in those low water conditions. So yet again, another incredibly easy indoor plant to look after. And it is really getting some serious height and volume on it as well. All of this is new growth, which is just incredible. So I think this one will end up getting really big and probably more become a floor plant than something that's up on my shelf. This is another unique little type of plant and I actually have no idea what this variety is called. I really can't remember, but I just kind of liked it because it had that really sagey, minty green kind of coloring. And this one really, really loves to be watered as well because it's more of a succulent style of plant. So I just got this included in its pot from Woolworths and it was literally $10. So another really cheap indoor plant and all of this is new growth. So yet again, it's just thriving. It loves to be watered frequently. And this is actually my little indoor plant watering bottle. So I just use this, it's got a little pump 
pump on top and a little spray head so I can kind of really lightly mist my plants to give them a little bit of surface water and then when I want to go in with a bit of a deeper water I've got a watering can out on the balcony as well. Up here on my shelf, I have a little cactus and this one requires such minimal effort. Yet again, you can pretty much water them whenever. This is my other little cactus and this guy is my pride and joy. He just loves growing in some of the worst conditions. He's just randomly sitting here in my kitchen by the sink and it's got all of these really unique growths on the bottom of it, which kind of looks like a ton of baby cactuses. I also put in these pebbles in cactus pots because they perform better when they are slightly starved of oxygen. And this again, it has a bunch of the other ones up here and it has grown really, really tall. So when I first bought this, it was literally this big and it is just thriving. It would probably be about 40 centimeters tall now. So love this cactus and love how happy it is. It's just really, really thriving in this little pot. I might actually need to move it into a bigger pot pretty soon. This is my largest strand of the pothos. It's not looking particularly healthy at the moment because I just don't think it was getting adequate sunlight sitting near the window there, but it's kind of made a bit of a comeback down the bottom, but the top of it is unfortunately looking a little thin, but this is what I end up taking cuttings off because basically it just ends up getting really long and I will just trim here below one of the nodules, rip off the bottom leaf and then pop that section in the water. So this one's just about ready to be trimmed again because it's gotten really, really long. And like I said, it literally just keeps growing and growing and you can get cuttings off it almost every month. This is the last plant in my collection that I wanted to show you guys. It has just gotten out of control, so I might end up selling this one soon because it just doesn't really suit my apartment anymore. But it is called a parlor palm, which is meant to mean a miniature palm. But like I said, this one really just exploded because it was so happy here sitting next to the window. So I think that this one, it is a time to go. But as you can see, it is just thriving. It's so luscious and thick and constantly getting big new growths coming out of it so yet again i just water this one once a week and i give it quite a generous water because it is very dense and the pot does not have drainage on it this one is fine just to soak up the water on its own that's it you guys thank you so much for joining me on this fun little indoor plant tour i hope this kind of gave you a couple of ideas for the different varieties of plants which i will try and list them all down below because i know some of the names are like impossible to figure out how to spell let alone search for them on the internet and try and find them at your local nursery so i will put the proper kind of botanically spelling in the description box but i hope you loved this because like i said i just find my plants bring me so much joy and i really do love when people come over and i think it is one of the first things that catch their eye it's just having beautiful real plants in my space so thanks so much for watching and i will see you guys really soon bye